About four years ago, I got to spend a glorious week with a Dyson supersonic hairdryer. I loved my seven days with what at the time was billed as the most advanced and expensive hairdryer ever made. Ever since, I've been wondering about the long term. Was the Dyson test a fad and I was just giddy with anticipation? Or is this hairdryer really something you should have and I should have bought for myself back then and never looked back? I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and I recently had the opportunity to spend some more quality time with the Dyson Supersonic so I could revisit that initial experience and see if I felt the same way after being able to use it more often and more regularly. I'm going to tell you what I found, but an early heads up if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful to so please hit that like button and give me a sub because it does help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. For those who may be unfamiliar, Dyson, makers of cyclonic bagless vacuums and bladeless fans and heaters, announced its new hairdryer probably about four or five years ago, and it almost instantly achieved cult status. The supersonic hairdryer features similar technology to those other products, but refined and on a much smaller scale. This hairdryer looks completely different from traditional dryers. For starters, it's shaped like a cylinder and it's open in the middle. It's flat on both ends, so it kind of resembles a tube. Now that's because the motor is not in the head of the dryer, like in traditional models. In Dyson's case, it's in the handle. I received one of Dyson's special gift sets, which arrives in a beautiful leather box with a plush interior. The box is a beautiful place to store your supersonic when it's not in use, and it looks really nice on the bathroom shelf, where you could use it to store makeup too. The dryer comes with a long, heavy-duty cord that's about 2.7 meters, and it does have a large and boxy electrical unit near the plug. There's probably more than enough cord for most home users, and even for a salon. There's also a diffuser cone for managing curly hair, two styling nozzles that attach with magnets, very clever, a rubber mat, and a string loop for hanging. The Dyson Supersonic has some smart features that make you wonder why no one thought of them before the Dyson engineering team did. For starters, the nozzle attachments, and I'm going to show you here, they snap on with strong magnets, making attaching and detaching them ultra easy. The Supersonic contains a computer microprocessor, which Dyson says is constantly measuring temperature, so it's better able to hold its heat settings and for longer. Dyson says the ability to do that helps protect your hair's natural shine. The motor that powers the airflow in the Dyson Supersonic is just 2.7 centimeters wide compared to other hair dryers where it's more like 10 centimeters wide. Now, because it is so small, Dyson was able to place the motor for the dryer into the handle here. And what that does is results in a better overall balanced weight for this device. No longer will your blow dryer feel heavy after lengthy drying sessions. And plus this aims to cut drying time overall anyhow. But with the bulk of the weight in the handle, it feels less heavy in your hands. There is also a rubber mount in here which is supposed to prevent the motor from vibrating against the inside of the handle and that's supposed to reduce the noise transfer between the motor and the case. Even so, I would not call this dryer quiet. Plenty of hair dryers today come with ionic technology, which is said to reduce frizz and static, and Dyson Supersonic does too. Negative ions are emitted from this dryer, which should make things easier on your hair. I'll report back. The Supersonic has four heat settings, 100 degrees, said to be for faster drying and styling, 80, which Dyson labels for regular drying, 60 degrees Celsius for gentle drying, and a 28 degree constant cold setting for cooling, smoothing, and setting your style. Similarly, speed of the airflow is adjustable to three different levels. There's ultra high for fast drying, regular, and low. The Supersonic here has 1600 watts of power. And while that sounds like a lot of power, it's actually quite common in professional and even drugstore hair dryers. It's the technology in this dryer, though, that makes all the difference. For those that want to understand what's going on inside here, you basically have a mini computer packed right into the dryer walls that keeps the heat and the airflow even. Dyson is using what it calls its air multiplication technology to create more airflow through this dryer. The supersonic takes all that power and in essence forces more air through the tool, which gives this dryer its strong airflow. I usually only dry my hair about two or three times a week, mainly to try and keep it healthy, but also out of laziness. With the Dyson Supersonic, I noticed right away that my drying time is shortened significantly, which is a huge plus. The other thing that's immediately apparent is how soft my hair feels after drying, really like silk. 
I ran some tests to time my drying, compare it to another dryer. The Dyson was able to dry my medium length hair almost fully in about two minutes using the highest heat and airflow settings. Then I needed about an extra three minutes to finish the drying and to smooth and style individual sections using high heat but medium airflow and one of the styling nozzles. I noticed when I was doing the final stage smoothing, I only needed to go over each section once with the Dyson before it was dry and in place. It's also worth noting I did still need to flat iron my hair for that shiny finished look even when using the Dyson. Probably one of the biggest surprises for me from the tests I was doing here was that I actually spend a lot less time drying my hair than I thought I did. If you'd asked me before I did any of this testing, I would have guessed that it takes me 20 minutes to dry my hair. Turns out that I'm only taking about five minutes with my other hair dryer and the Dyson drops that to about three or four minutes. So yes, the Dyson does save time. The question is, is that enough to justify the $500 price tag? Now, perhaps if you have a lot more hair or thicker hair than I do, you'd be shaving off even more drying time using something like the Dyson Supersonic. I notice a definite difference with the Dyson Supersonic that would actually make me buy this dryer. My hair feels insanely soft. I couldn't tell you if there's one specific aspect of the dryer that gets the credit, but my hair feels soft, silky, and smooth, and seems to keep free of tangles all day long. These effects last into the next days. I really like the Dyson Supersonic. I love the fact that it's quicker than my old dryer and generates less scorching heat. I also felt like my hair was a lot softer and smoother after being dried with the Dyson, and I continue to marvel over how silky my hair feels on days when I use the dryer and even the days following. If I were to make any improvements to this device, it would be to make it a bit quieter because, come on, that would be another major revolution. And I would get rid of the annoyingly large electrical box on the cable. So would I buy this hair dryer for myself? Oh man, I really want to because it makes my hair feel great and it is super fast. At $500 Canadian, it is definitely an investment. Bottom line, if you can afford this dryer and you dry your hair daily, if you've got lots of hair or your lifestyle is such that a few minutes are worth getting back, you are definitely going to love this device. The Dyson Supersonic sells for about $4.99 Canadian. You can get it on Dyson's website or from places like Amazon or Sephora. If you want to read more, head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've posted a full blog and you can post any questions you have for me about this hairdryer either there on the blog or as always here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can catch me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always find me at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.